hladné. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I believe I'm, I am live. Uh, Shabbat. Shabbat shalom to everyone. I believe I'm live. Uh, Shabbat shalom to everyone. Good to be in the service of the Most High once again. Uh, we're going to give uh, a little time for different ones to come in. Thank God for another Sabbath day. Thank God for being in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Father. Yes, yes, we thank you for another Sabbath day. Amen, amen. I'm going to sit here and look at myself for a minute here until somebody uh, comes on. And then um, we will move forward. I pray that I can... I pray that I'm being heard fine. Uh, I won't really know until somebody comes on to let me know if everything sounds okay and if everything looks okay. But prayerfully, everything does sound okay and everything does look okay. So give us a little bit of time now and uh, we'll wait for something to start coming in. Prayerfully, as if some want to come in. Maybe some may choose tonight not to come in tonight. Shalom, 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 my dog. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, sir. I see Timothy Hadar braces. Prophet Hadar has came on into the service. Amen. Bless the Most High. Shabbat shalom, sir. Yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, for maybe... Um, but the Bible says we're in the presence of two or three. You know, which we know that God's in the presence even when you're by yourself. But according to the biblical text, you know, two or three gathered in my name. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna hold we're gonna uh, use that as our anchor uh, verse to start this Erev Shabbat. service off tonight. So when we get um, at least two more in, Hadar, we're going to go ahead and um, start off with our Rev Shabbat service. Amen. 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 So definitely it's good to see you. Prayerfully had a good day. Prayerfully, you know, your day was full with double today. You know, we believe the Most High that on the sixth day, we receive double, amen, as we rest in Him on the Shabbat. So prayerfully, your, yours as well as everybody that's going to come on, and everybody that may be watching this later on, if you may watch it at a later time and not this Sabbath, amen, well, you know, when next Sabbath come around, uh, you know, be looking forward to Receive double on that sixth day. So next, let's say next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. 
you know, believe that you receive double in your in your spiritual dimension, in your physical dimension, in your financial area, in your mental area, increase on that sixth day. Remember when they went out, uh, the children of Israel, they went to gather manna. The Most High provided for them double on that sixth day so they could rest on the Shabbat and not to go out and gather it. So we know that the same thing, uh, we can have faith that the same thing would apply today. That we on the sixth day can receive double um, in whatever area we need it in as we rest in him on the seventh day. So yeah, we're going to wait for at least two more um, to come on in to the service. Then we will go ahead and have our Yerev Shabbat. Yerev means even, evening. Um, evening side of the Sabbath service. And um, now I do, I will say this for some that um, are not familiar with the Shabbat or the Sabbath. Um, you know, the Sabbath is the way we believe and observe as we understand the scriptures, um, to be the seventh day of the week. And what we call in our Greco-Roman world, Friday evening to Saturday evening. Now we do know that some don't view it that way. It's not a salvational thing, praise the Most High. Um, and some, you know, view the day beginning at another time. And we are going to have that study one day. One day we're going to have that study. Um, when does a day begin? When does a day begin? And some people that may be viewing this may not have a clue I'm talking about. But um, stay tuned and keep your ears open, you know, that you can tune in when we have that teaching, when we have that midrash, a midrash. When does a day begin according to the scriptures? Amen. So it is now about 7.40. Uh, well, looks like it's just still me and you, Hada. Uh, well, I'm going to my phone. It's going off over here. Uh, let me see. Okay. I'm not going to pay that. Look at that. But, uh, but I am going to stick with what I was saying. I'm going to stick with uh, Matthew. Let me read it. Let me read it. Amen. Matthew. Got more than one verse, but I'm gonna use uh, Matthew 18. Amen. 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 Good to see you, Pastor Vicky. Amen. 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 Good to see you, Pastor Vicky. Uh, where it says. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse number 20. It says, For where, there, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. So we are standing on the anchor verse. Uh, as we start out at first with just one present, a prophet of God. Now it looks like we have at least four, so we can go ahead and get started. Father God, we bless and we thank you for this Erev Shabbat, this evening side of the Sabbath. And gracious God, before we go into any kind of worship experience unto you, any kind of study, any kind of service, Father, Father God, Father, we know, Lord God, that the airways must be cleared and the airways must be opened, that everything we do, Lord God, be a glorious smell your nostrils, a pleasant sound in your ears. So, Father God, we do come in the name above every name. 
becoming Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the name that one day every knee must bow and every tongue will confess that he is, he is Lord. And we come in his name and his name alone. We come repenting of all our sins. We repent of every known sin and every unknown sin, of all unrighteousness. We repent right now. And we ask for forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Lord God, but in no way do we want to abuse your mercy. In no way do we want to abuse your grace. But we do thank you and we do bless you that we do have it and that it is a part of our salvation walk. So, Father God, we bless and we thank you for this Shabbat. Thank you for all those that are on and all those, Lord God, that are going to be tuning in tonight. And, Lord God, that those that may be watching at a later date, we just bless you. We thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that everything we do and say, Lord God, will be led by your Spirit. Pray, gracious Yahweh, that we leave here edified, exalted, and encouraged to seek your faith, to seek your will, to seek your desire like never before. Teach us by your Spirit. And Father God, we do pray, Lord God, for the sick. Lord God, we pray that you heal them. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that your word tonight will even heal, deliver, and set free. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that, Lord God, for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray your shalom rest there. We pray, Lord God, that your kingdom will be added into today with Gentile and non-Gentile, with Israel and non-Israel, believers, souls into your kingdom. Lord God, we just bless you. We thank you for all that you've done so far and all that you will continue to do in this service. It is in your name we pray, Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen, amen, amen. Well, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you, everybody. Pastor Vicky again. Good to see you, Hadar. Um, I don't. I believe it's four people watching. But I don't know. I don't see the other two names. But if I throughout this service tonight, if I don't call you by name, uh, please don't take it personal. It may be that it just I didn't get it, didn't notice it, or I'm reading, and the screen started flipping on. But tonight. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you, Sister Lisa. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you, Sister Lisa. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Yes. Um, I would ask of you, call somebody, text somebody, email somebody, whatever you do. Tell them, come on in. Come on into the service tonight. Come on into the service. Y'all know, y'all know that, um, you know, a lot of y'all know that, you know, if we have Shabbat, a lot of time I'm at the temple, uh, you know, for the last month, I guess, I've been teaching from home. And y'all know that's kind of different for me, you know. Um, and uh, so, you know, y'all just keep the old boy in prayer. We're going to see how this season go. We're going to see how this season goes. Good to see you, Mother Francis. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Brother Reese. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Mother Francis and Brother Reese. Uh, y'all know how... Um, Y'all know me, you know. Uh, I love being at the temple on the Rev Shabbat. I love being at the temple on the Rev Shabbat. And so this is, y'all got to pray for the old boy, you know, that uh, that I'm doing it this way for right now. I don't know how long, but for right now. Um, so because, you know, uh, I can see that doing it this way as of right now, know how long doing it this way as far as the teaching and the service I can see as of today you know that more people uh, are tuning in and listening and uh, more so than when I go to the temple on Friday evenings you know so it's like okay okay go to the temple on Friday evening uh, even if I'm there by myself I'm fine y'all know I'm fine Cause I'm not by myself. I'm there with the Most High, you know. There with the Most High, you know. And of course, I can sit there and read, pray, and and and, and, and teach myself. <laughs> but um, but then you got. I I must think. Okay, well, if I'm there uh, by myself, uh, or some may come through every now and then. Uh, and y'all know Mother Francis. Mother Francis was, was right there, joint to the hip. You know, before she moved, um, and this ain't throwing nobody under the bus. Y'all, y'all, y'all know how we roll. We just everything. We just transparent people. Uh, but anyhow, so 
And even, you know, with her not being there, I could still go, you know. And I have been there many times, you know, by myself. Um, and love every bit of it, because me and the most high. And I don't Facebook when I'm there. And I'm not on social media when I'm there. So I got to thinking. I, I, you you got to look at, you know, it, it's a, you got to look at the bigger picture. So I'm like, okay, do I go there uh, on the Rev Shabbat, which I have no problem with doing it by myself, whatever, and basically be there uh, and teach myself or pray and read and have a good time in the Most High. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Or do I do it like this for this season or for this moment until it changes and reach a larger audience, reach more sheep? I think, okay. I think this would be what I would do until I feel the Lord tell me to do differently. Because it seems like more people tune in um, doing it this way on the Rev Shabbat. Um, and because of all this stuff that's going on with the pandemic and so forth, so forth, you know, it got people feeling a certain way. Not just Beth sure, it got people in a certain space, and that's understood. I mean, that's understood we're human. So with that being said, so it's like knowing that that's something that I really love to do, going to the temple and being there, even by myself, it's like now you're like, okay, this is what is present. Or this is what the season is at this moment. So then it's like you're like, I start feeling a certain way. I start feeling a certain way. And it's like you get, I get in my feelings as to what then took place concerning this pandemic and concerning, you know, the average is picking his head up, head up with permission only, and people's lives being altered and changed and stuff like this, and people don't want to, you know, fellowship and come out. And that don't mean they not say it, don't mean they not go to glory, we all go to glory, all saved, long as you believe in Jesus Christ. So you so I feel a certain way, so it's like, um, you kind of get wound. So now when you get wound, we know that the battle is not a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle. The Bible says we rest not against flesh and blood. So now. Now, you're angry. You're warm at the adversary. You're warm at Lucifer. So you get warm at Lucifer, you go at him in the spiritual way. So, uh, so since if I got to be here in this season, doing it this way, turn it up a little bit. I ain't talking about turn like y'all, some of you thinking. Turn it up a little bit. So y'all may not want to miss. If it's going to be this way for a season, I don't know how long. Tell everybody to tune in. Tell everybody to chime in. How you want to see it. You may not want to miss something because I'm feeling a certain way. So then I'm going to come out, pray the most high on the leading Holy Spirit, come out swinging. And tonight, it's going to be one of those swings. Y'all, we about to experience a blackout. Some of y'all may be saying, what in the world was that? I see my wife with the big eyes. <laughs> I see her with the big eyes on the thing there. And I heard her way back in the room. Yes. We about to experience a blackout. 
At Beth Yeshua, we've had some blackouts in the past. Y'all know that we don't wait until February to talk about the blacks of color or dark people of antiquity. Dark people, color people, black people of history. Yes. Call somebody. Text somebody. FaceTime somebody. Email somebody. Tell them. We about to experience a blackout. That's right. We about to experience a blackout. Here we go. Genesis, let's get our Bibles. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for your word. Teach us by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's go to Genesis. Y'all know at Beth Yeshua, we don't wait till February to talk about black history. This teaching tonight may be kind of sensitive to some ears. Not intended to offend nobody. Y'all at Beth Yeshua, y'all know. And those that may be watching later on, but not tonight, may tune in later on. This teaching is not to offend nobody. Not to hurt nobody's feelings. Us at Beth Yeshua, we already know how we roll at Beth Yeshua. But for those that may be peeping in, whether it be tonight, or later on when you're watching this, don't get offended. You might not want to hang out for this one. If you're carrying your feelings on your shoulders, this may not be the teaching you want to zoom in on tonight or today or whenever you're watching this. Because we bought the experience a blackout. Yes, they like the screen went black for a couple seconds. And I heard my wife say what, and I saw her when I came back to the laptop. I saw those big, that, that what you call that, whatever you call that thing with the big eyes. Because she didn't know I was going to do that. Nobody knew I was going to do that. But with that being said, here we go. I'm going to do something like this here. Yes, it's dark. It's dark. I want you to remember that. It is dark. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. I'm going to read out of this book right here. God's kinship with dark colors. See, as I teach this, I'm not racist, I'm not prejudiced. Some people got to take a second look at me to figure out whether I'm white or black. There's nothing wrong with being white. There's nothing wrong with being black. There's nothing wrong with being whatever complexion you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the sight of Elohim by him. But this is Black History Month. Though I don't wait till Black History Month to talk about the blackness or the colorness in the Bible, I will take this time to zero in on this subject. 
because it's the month that was given for some more reason. In the beginning, everything was dark. Meaning, somebody came along and made that dark complexion or that darkness negative. That darkness not to be appreciated, not to be liked, not to be wanted. Somebody came along in history and started to feel a certain way about this darkness, specifically dark complected people, and felt like they needed to change history or try to alter truth or try to do something to shed a, a negative light on the darkness. But you can't get away from the Bible. You can't get away from history. You may come and try to change and alter and manipulate and whitewash this, that, and that, this, that, this, that, and that, 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 that. But you can't change history and you definitely can't change the Bible. You can't change the dirt. I better hurry up because I'm going to take too long going this route. I mean, I ain't finished it all tonight. Tune in. Once again, the beginning and darkness. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness. And this author here has beside the word darkness. And this is by Dr. John L. Johnson. I don't, I don't own the rights to none of this, none of this work. This is his work. This is his scholarship. He has darkness. He had parentheses. Ham was everywhere. Darkness was everywhere. Now, I'm not saying in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, that black people were everywhere. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just bringing out the point that everything started with darkness and came out of darkness. Y'all better get this here. Everything started with black. I'm going to read it one more time. One more again. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was everywhere. And in the darkness, the Spirit of God moved. Upon the face of the waters. In the darkness. The spirit of Elohim moved. In the face of the waters. Oh my God. My God. I'm going to read a little bit more. He said. At the very beginning. God could have commenced his creation. With natural light. God could have easily started. His creating of everything. With natural light. He could have easily done that. But he didn't. Huh? But instead he chose darkness. He asked here also Amos 5, 18 through 20. Read that in your Bible study time. He has a scripture here. Matter of fact, let's get there. We can go ahead and read it. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's go to Amos. Come on, y'all, get your Bibles. Amos 5, 18 through 20. So all, all this author here is basically doing, he's not trying to put, he's not trying to say that darkness, let me dismiss this thing here. I don't know what this is here. Get this off here. Okay. He's not, he's not saying that, that darkness in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 is black people. He, that, that's not what he's saying. Though the original man, and we're going to look at that tonight, was black people. The first man, Adam, was black people. But what this author is trying to bring out here is that this darkness started everything. It was the beginning of a thing. It was their present first. And everything that we see in existence with our natural eye 
came out of that darkness. So darkness can't be bad, y'all. Of course, depending on what context that word darkness is being used in, make that clear. Depending on what context the word darkness is being used in. So now he's going to take us to Amos and not so much pull out the uh, point to a dark people in Amos, but he's going to bring out the point of darkness being present and looking what's taking place in that darkness. Okay, Amos 5.18. Five eighteen through twenty. Get your Bibles. Amos five eighteen through twenty. Here we go. Woe unto you that desire day of the Lord or the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay, the day of the Lord in this context is talking about basically. An end time judgment of God, or end time um, coming forth of God, bringing or executing His judgment, uh, eschatological, or you know, and, and not even just end time dealing God dealing with a certain situation uh, for His judging it, uh, disciplining it, or whatever it may be. But in that darkness, or it being called like the scared darkness. The day of the Lord is darkness. You see God doing something in that darkness. Meaning that that time frame is called darkness. But you see God moving and executing something in that time frame of darkness. He could have he could have used other words to uh bring forth its execution or whatever he's going to do. But he chose that time of darkness or that word darkness. Just like in Genesis chapter 1. It was darkness present in the beginning. And God's spirit began to move in that darkness. Oh my God. Let that settle for a minute. Let that, let that settle for a minute because... I think everybody will agree. You want to see a spiritual people. You want to see a spiritual uh, uh, a spiritual experience or a spiritual responding or interacting worship. Y'all know. Hand down. Not throwing off on nobody. But hand down. Colorful got it. Here we go. Let's go back to Amy. Here we go. Verse 19. Verse 18. The latter part. The day of the Lord is dark and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion. Um, yes. And a bear met him and went into the house. And lean his hand on the wall, and the servant bid it. That's like judgment. That's that darkness. Meaning because the Bible says work while it's yet day. Because when darkness come, when night come, you're going to see from your work. God, because that's when stuff's going to start hitting the fan. See, right now, Prophetically, it's still day. Even though it's night here in Petersburg, Virginia, it's still day prophetically for us humanity. Meaning, when Messiah comes to gather his church, thank you, Pastor Vicky. Thank you, dear. That's going to be when the night comes. No longer working during day. Like like majority of people, they got, a lot of people got night jobs, but a lot of people go to work during the day and they're off at night. So prophetically, we are still in the day. Ever since Adam, up until now, it's been day. Working while day. But when Messiah comes to gather us, that's night. 
But look at what's happening in that dark, in that night. He's coming. Something is happening. Just like in Genesis chapter 1, in that darkness, God is moving by his Ruach, HaKodesh. Oh, it's good in darkness. It's good in the black skin. But it ain't no good if you're in the black skin and you ain't got Messiah. I don't care, who, I don't care how dark he is. If you ain't got Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you dark going to hell. Period. Take that to the bank. Here we go. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, and went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and the serpent bit him. Verse 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness, and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? Look at that. Something is happening in that darkness. God is moving. God is doing something. Which we know he's always doing something. Don't get it twisted. Day or night. But look at what the author is bringing out, showing that there's an activity, a key activity, a key movement, a key functioning in this darkness. Let's go to, uh, we, we're going to go back to Genesis 1 and 3, 1 to 3, but let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, let's get that. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. Oh, yeah, we about to experience a blackout, y'all. It's about to be a blackout. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. And it reads, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. See that? God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Hath shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glorious of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But all this author is doing here is Paul is hinting back to Genesis chapter 1 where it says God said let there be light and that light came forth keyword came forth out of darkness. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1 through 3. Here we go again. Somebody tried to spread falseness about the black man, about the black complexion, about the darker complected people. Somebody had an agenda. But God wants us to know truth. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the world, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. But what was first? Darkness. Hmm. That was first. Darkness. Not light. Darkness. The first human. The first human being. Adam. Was dark. Yes, yeah, so now you come from dark. In the beginning, the very beginning, light coming forth. In the physical dimension. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Vicky. Absolutely. In this physical, watch it now. In the spiritual, in the physical, or non or non-human dimension. I'm a word like this. Non-human dimension. It began with darkness. So that means, oh my God, look at this, y'all. Get this family. Get this. That means that darkness was first, then came light, then came sun, then came moon, then came tree, then came whatever, 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 whatever. It came out of darkness. 
Let that settle for a minute. And that's dealing with the natural things. But now we're about to touch on the, uh, but, you know, that dealing with, the, oh, I'm a, for lack of a better word, that deal with the thing that's unhuman. Water's not human. The sun is not human. The moon's not human. Trees not human. Physical, natural, unhuman thing came out of darkness. Now we're going to talk about the human. Human being came out of darkness. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I'm sure it's going to be a blackout, y'all. The blackout. And the Lord formed man. That word man there is Adam. Adam. And the one way that Adam was spelled in ancient time was, or pronounced in Hebrew, was Adham. Adham. And it was spelled A D H A. M. A D H A M. A D means odd or odd for Adonai. Adonai the Lord. Ham, ham, ham means dark, hot, black. So you put the two together, you have Adonai or the Lord's black man. The Lord's the creator's black man, Adam, Adham. Anciently spelled Adham, you can spell it, English transliterated, A-D-H-A-M. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay, here we go. And God, verse 7, I'm sorry, and the Lord God formed man, Adam, of the dust of the ground, Adama. Adama, look at that, from the ground, the earth, dark earth. Come on, there you go, Pastor Vicky. Thank you, thank you. Bring it out. The ground, dark earth. So now you got everything in creation coming out of darkness. Now you even got the human being coming out of darkness. Come on now. You got everything in creation, Genesis chapter 1, 1, 2, and 3, coming out of darkness. Now you got even the human race coming out of the ground, darkness. Oh my God. I'm going to read one more game. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and, and breathed into the nostril the breath of life and man, Adam, Became a living soul. Now, in this book right here, Theological Word Dixon Old Testament, on page 75. I don't know if y'all can see that. Y'all probably can't see that. I know y'all saw that word there, Adam. Adam spelled A D. H A M. Wow. Okay. And now here we go. Let Let's get a little bit of what this word comes from. A Akkadian word. Okay. Adam meaning man or proper name Adam. Okay. You're gonna see that uh it means uh this word uh, does not include an Akkadian with the meaning man mankind. But Akkadian words are the, are the two dark 
red soil, uh, uh, mu, uh, mu, red blood. I'm going to say it again. This word does not occur in Akkadian with the meaning man, man, mankind. That means that this word where it's used in Akkadian language, it is there, but it's going to tell you what it means in that and that etymology, okay? But the Cadian word Ada Ada Adamatu means dark, red soil, and Ad Adamu means red blood. Red blood. So if you want to know basically what color Adam was. Here we go. That first human was, if you cut yourself, if you cut yourself, and you see that blood that come out, that dark blood, dark looking, and especially when it dries, that'd be the complexion. Closer to Adam, a dark man. Okay, hello. That ain't all. Let me um, let me get one more source here. Out of here. Page eleven. I told you the blackout, y'all. Page eleven. It says, also note old Akkadian Adamu, like it said in the other source, dark red as of a garment. Akkadian Adamatu, dark red soil. Adamu, red blood. So, once again, you have dark, 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 dark. And I'm going to get another source. Uh, I'm going to see if I can grab it really quick. I hope it don't take too long for me to get my hands on it. Where is it at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? It's hiding, y'all. I got it. Watch this. Now, well, here we go. See this? Why do I show y'all this? Because I don't take credit for none of this work. I don't take credit for none of these, none of this material. I'm using it by, by permission. That's why I'm sharing where I get it from. Okay? So out of this, I'm going to read out this book, this source right here. Under Adam. And watch something here. Watch this now. Okay, here we go. Look how they gonna spell it. You probably can't see that, but I'm gonna just hold it up there. Adam. <laughs> I know y'all saw that. Adam, Adam, Hebrew. Adham, A D H A M, red slash or maze. And then it goes on and on and on and say something else. But I just want to bring that out saying that the original, the original people of the scriptures. Were people of color. The first human, Adam and Eve, formed from Adama, the ground. People of color. Adham. Y'all saw it. At least two sources there saying it's spelled A D H A M. H A M. Ham. Ham means dark. All humanity 
came out of this dark man. Just like everything in existence came out of that dark space. Genesis chapter 1. Somebody is trying to shed a bad light on your darkness, on that melanin in you. We was created in the image of God. These black humans, these dark people, was created in the image of God. And then that image could do mighty and magnificent things. Let's go here. Let's look at this, Ricky. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Created in God's image, all humanity, for sure, no question. But the first humans were people of color, dark. And in that image of God, with that relationship with God, and also because of that melanin, and we're going to look at that, could do mighty things because of that relationship, because of that divine complexion, and more so because of the relationship they have with God, until they start walking away from God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. I'm oh, sorry, chapter 7. No, I'm sorry, chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. Yes, yes, yes. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply, these colored folk, these dark folk, and somebody may be saying, well, where were, where, where were any other complexion of people? Where were the, the, light, the white race or the Indian race or the Mexican race or the Chinese race or the Whatever race, they won't around. They won't there at this time. These were dark people, color people, mighty people, smart, powerful, mighty people. In the image of God, could do tremendous, miraculous things in that image of God. Also, with that dark complexion, and more so with the image of God, and that relationship they have with God, could do unthinkable things because of that relationship. Things we can't, and we're going to touch on a little bit of it. We're going to touch on a little bit of it. But these people, and you can't, and they were not Hebrews. They were not Hebrews. Because Hebrews came later on. Connected with Abraham. Or Abraham. These people, I believe, from what I have came across in my studies, they would have been called Adamites. Not Hebrews. They would have been called Adamites. Not Hebrews. The language they would have spoke would have been called Adamism. Adamism, not Hebrews. These were the mighty people, powerful people, and were living to be a long, 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 long time age old. Could do tremendous, miraculous things because of their understanding, because of their strength. 
because of their knowledge, because of their wisdom, because of their relationship they had with God until they fell away and walked away from God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them, that the, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, these sons of God, right men with God, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. That's these men and human today. For that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. This is why some sources believe, some schools of thought believe that man can at least live up to be a hundred and twenty years old. Some schools of thought believe that man can at least live up to be a hundred and twenty years old because of this verse. There were giants in that in the earth in those days. Excuse me. And also after that, when men, when the sons of God came into the doors of men. And they bare them children to them. The same became mighty men. Which were of old. Men of renown. Became mighty men. Men of honor. Men of renown meaning honor. Meaning uh, authority. Character. Powerful men. Wow. Verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness, here we go, these colored dark folk, mighty folk, great in ability, God saw that the wickedness of their heart was, was, in earth, was great in the earth and that every imagine of their thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So these folk here that was of color, Dark folk, mighty folk, powerful folk, strong folk, smart folk could do miraculous things that we can't even imagine. Their thoughts was only continually to do wicked and to do wrong, and they were not dying off soon. That means that they will continue to do that wrong for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and their children after them continue to do wrong hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, they won't die no like people die off today. They live to be 100 years old. So my these people 100 years old continue to do wrong. God said, look, I got to go down there and stop this. They always think wicked. That's all they want to do is something wicked. And whatever they want to do, they do it because they got the ability. They got the might. The capability because I created them in my image. These black folk, that melanin kicking in, working in, giving them great capabilities, even through the melanin, the skin complexion. They could do unthinkable. I'm going to read some things. Here we go. Oh, this book here. The Midrash says, page 81, I'm going to read this a little bit here. What these black folk, these color folk, were capable of doing. Now, this is all tradition. You're not going to find this in the Bible. This is tradition. This is Hebrew Israelite Jewish commentary. Okay? So you're not going to find this in the scriptures. This is only commentary. Okay? So this is no authority. The scriptures is the authority. The scriptures is the authority. We don't take this and read it as some kind of authority. Our Bible. And the books in our Bible is authority. This is just some outside Bible source that that's, that that is tradition to shed some light on some biblical things in our scripture. That's all it is. Okay? Noah, the crimes of the generation before the flood. The crimes of the generation before the flood. 
Although mankind no longer live in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden, their lifestyle before the Mabu, that means flood, still resembled that of the Gan Eden, meaning the Garden of Eden. Okay? Life was good. In fact, it was too good. It was a life of uninterrupted serenity and enjoyment. For example, he's going to give some examples here. Listen closely. Children were conceived and born on the same day. Type of one if y'all heard that. I'll make sure y'all listen. I want y'all type of one if y'all heard that. I want y'all type of one if y'all heard me say, life was good. In fact, it was too good. It was a life of uninterrupted serenity and enjoyment. For example, children were conceived and born on the same day. Did y'all hear that? We can't even begin. Thank you, though. Okay, Patrick, Vicky, uh, let me see. Thank you, Doc. Yeah. African Antiluvians spoke a pure language called Adhamism. Thank you. Since the name Adam was continued originally spelled Adham, this same language following the loo. Amen. The flood. The information can be found. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all get that information right there. Beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Vicky. Amen. And thank you, Don, for typing in number one. Amen. A newborn, get this now. A newborn child was immediately able to stand and walk. Y'all tell me where that's at. Tell me where that's at. Tell me, if we saw, if we saw, if we, <laughs> see, this is why some people don't seem to understand. And I, when I say that, when I say this, this is not me saying like I got all understanding because I don't. I don't. I definitely don't. But. If this is true, what we just read right here, and like I said, this ain't in the Bible. If this is true where it says, for example, children were conceived and born on the same day, and newborn child was immediately able to stand and walk and also had the ability to speak, then watch this now. Then, because some people seem like they don't understand. It, it like they don't connect the dots how when the gods told uh told put a mark upon Cain because he slew Abel that nobody would kill Cain. And sometimes people think that that nobody else would be somebody else that was in the land before Adam. I, I hope I don't, I don't want to confuse nobody. Some people try to have, you know, people in the land other than Adam you know, and had him in the land because they would, they would say, well, how can somebody kill Cain if they see Cain and bring some other people? Well, uh, if you knew this information here and you realize that uh, 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 Eve Eve having, um, okay, hell, these pandemic babies almost getting back. <laughs> he said these pandemic, I just read that. Well, <laughs> hey, hey, bro. Hey, I tell you one thing, you sure did say it's gonna be just like the days of Noah. Now I don't know if the pandemic baby, I don't know if that had that fit in there or not. But he said it's gonna be just like the days of Noah when he returned. So y'all can look at that. <laughs> Good point there. But um, so if they was able to conceive and be born, oh I'm, I'm gonna read it again, make sure I read it right. For example, children were conceived and born on the same day. If that was possible, 
and they grew up like like that, and they having babies after babies, and you live hundreds and hundreds of years, it'd be easy for people to grow up and later on get to the point they heard what Cain did and somebody tried to kill Cain. Because everybody growing up, you having babies and baby after baby, they're growing up fast, ain't nobody dying real soon. But see, they say this stuff without having this understanding or this information to help bring, you know, to help answer them. Okay, but here we go. A newborn child was immediately able to stand and walk and also had the ability to speak. Y'all imagine that. Furthermore, no child, listen to this family, listen to this, this is good. No child would ever die during his parents' lifetime. It's sad that, it's sad that a parent has to bury their child. It's sad. But we know it happened. It happened ever since Bible days. But this source is saying, furthermore, no child would ever die during his parents' lifetime. In fact, all parents would live to see not only their children, but also their grandchildren. Look at that. Y'all, it's almost, it's, it's 8.39, y'all. I'm going I'm to have to finish this next week, y'all. I ain't going to finish all this today. Keep it a little bit too long. I'm going to try to cut off at 9. I don't want to stay too long. Um, the generation before the Mabu or flood possessed enormous physical strength. So these black people, these colorful, these dark folk, they had enormous, enormous physical strength. Enormous. As the Pasuk says, 6-4, there were giants on earth in those days. Meaning, these were giants, huge people with great strength. Here we go. They were able to uproot whole cedar trees. <laughs> Type one if you heard that. They were able to uproot whole cedar trees. I want one of y'all right now. I give you a hundred dollars. I give you a hundred dollars. Take your phone. Take your phone and video you going in your backyard and wrapping your hand around one of you. I want you to be on video now. You go in your backyard. Thank, thank, thank you, Pastor Vicky. Thank, thank you, Mother Francis. Go in your backyard. I'm gonna give you. I will send you a hundred dollars cash out, or however you want to get it to you. If you go in your backyard, this won't take but five minutes. If you can do this, so you get so so you will get a hundred dollars in five minutes. I think that's a good little amount to make in five minutes. I love that. <laughs> I see you cracking up, Pastor Vicky. But I, hey, I'm going to put the offer out there. I will give you, uh, better yet, I'm going to make it interesting. I will give you $200. I will give you $200. If you go in your backyard, either you video yourself or have somebody to video you, I want you to wrap your hands around that tree. <laughs> Y'all tripping, that's good. <laughs> oh my god. Hey. Go back there. Go back there. Somebody maybe can do it. You video yourself yourself doing it. Or somebody video you doing it. You got two hundred dollars for me. Yes, you do. And you got my word on that. Here we go. They were able to uproot whole 
cedar trees and considered lions and panthers as harmless as fleas. Oh my God. Their strength did not diminish with old age. You, you, I know, hey, yeah, yeah, full tree. That man, my mother Francis, right there, when it says, their strength did not diminish with old age, meaning they got stronger. But on the contrary, it grew. This strength only disappeared after the Mabu, meaning after the flood. So this strength that would grow as they got older, it started diminishing after the flood. Y'all, y'all let that settle for me. These dark folk, these colorful, as they get older, they get stronger. And it didn't start diminishing or they started getting weaker until after the flood. Now we can clearly see, I can, how they was able to make those pyramids. And a lot of those pyramids that was made, they was made before the flood. Oh, yes. A great many of the pyramids were made before the flood. And God saw fit, and this is another subject for another time, and his master plan to allow those pyramids to withstand, to withstand those flood waters. Uh, look, we've been looking at the news here lately. Look at all the devastating Storms and different storms and snow and winds and stuff and and, and see the devastation they're doing to homes and to and to property and cars and all this kind of stuff. And it's just a storm. It's just a wind. And when I say just, I don't mean something lightly because people are losing their lives and stuff is getting destroyed. Well, but the point I'm trying to bring out is when the Most High sent the flood, a lot of the pyramids were made before the flood. And I'm drawing in on the pyramid because the pyramid was a man-made thing. I ain't talking about the mountains and the trees and stuff because the mountains and the trees, you know, God formed them, you know, out of the darkness and all that kind of stuff. A lot of those things survived the flood. Well, I'm talking about a man-made thing outside of the ark. Well, God gave uh, Noah the blueprint to the ark. And I believe, I believe that God gave them colored black folk, dark folk, the blueprint to the pyramids. That's my personal belief. That's why they were able to sustain or, or, or withstand the flood. The flood. The, the water from the flood went about 22 feet or 22 and a half feet above the highest mountain. Look at this. That flood went about that water when it came down. It rained for 40 days for the night and it went about 22 feet above the highest mountain. So that means that the pyramids were, were, were directly covered with water. And that pressure from that water coming down. Y'all know that pressure? Y'all see these storms? Y'all see these storms? Look at that pressure that these houses, you know, on that sea coast. Y'all know when that sea coast come? Oh, when that storm come along that sea coast, those houses a lot of times get wiped out. They try to put little sandbags, you know, up there to protect their property, bless their heart. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Put on bad the storm is, but but you can't stop it. You can't stop it. But a lot of those pyramids survived the storm. That's God, y'all. I know I know we think a lot about the Egyptian the pyramid, think a lot of negative stuff. 
That came later. The negativity, the idol worship came later. I'm talking about, I'm talking about these Adamites. I'm talking about these Adamites that had a relationship with God and could do mighty things, and then later on they started doing some twisted stuff. And they had the wisdom and knowledge to build these pyramids and could have a relationship with God, and the pyramids survived the flood, and I believe it's prophetic, but that's not for the night. Here we go. So... They lived a very long time, hundreds of years. Only when they sinned did Hashem, meaning God, did Hashem say in verse 5 of chapter 6, and his days shall be 120 years. So only when they sinned did they begin to be shortened that they can live up to be 120 years. But they can live for hundreds of years. Before then. Okay. These are some powerful folk, y'all. Here goes another point. Listen very closely. They knew no suffering of any kind. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, look at that. They knew no suffering of any kind. They sold on watch it. They sold only once every 40 years. They sold only once every 40 years, and the earth produced a sufficient amount for the following 40 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> God Almighty. What do you think about that? I'm going to read, read it one more again so you hear it. Let me get me help here. Y'all, I get excited, y'all. Y'all see, I get excited about them. Huh? They sold only once every 40 years. And the earth produced a sufficient amount for the following 40 years. Wow. Listen to this, y'all. Y'all ready for this one? They did not have to endure excessive heat or cold since there were no change in seasons. See that? And you know what? I got <laughs> I gotta say this. Now, y'all know I ain't racist, I ain't prejudiced. And sometimes me and my wife, we have our little pillow talk. And I, and I sometimes think a little something like this. I may say something like this here. I wonder. I wonder. Now, y'all know, you know, those that know me, you know, I'm not really, I mean, I I, I play a sport. Ain't nothing wrong with playing sports and all like that. Um, you know, but the Olympics, you know, the gymnasium, you know, because y'all know, especially bad for sure, y'all know, you hear that word gymnasium? Y'all remember that? Back for sure? We talk about that gymnasium and that, that Greek gymnasium, what took place in gymnasium and all that kind of stuff. So now you think about the gymnasium, you, or gymnasium, you think about, you know, and I ain't going to go into all that because I don't want to lose somebody that may be watching this later on and say, that guy there, man, what he talking about? But anyhow, for those that back for sure, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're talking about that word gymnasium and what they did in them, in them gymnasium, that Greek, that Greek Olympic stuff. And this ain't gonna throw off on the Olympics, you know. But, you know, it'd be good to know some of the stuff. But anyhow, so I be thinking, and, and y'all might need to, I be thinking like this sometimes. I wonder, now I don't know how long the Greek Olympics been out. I don't know if that started when. I guess the Summer Olympics or the Spring Olympics. I don't know how that stuff works. I don't know if it was just the Summer Olympics first and then later on in time they they came up with the Greek Olympics years later. I'm not sure. But I can't help but think something like this. I wonder if they came up with the Greek 
with the with the with the Winter Olympics because ain't too many color folk. <laughs> help me, Jesus! Help me! Help me! Help me, Jesus! Ain't too many color folk gonna be out there that cold. <laughs> Y'all be tripping. I know I'm tripping by myself. I can't wonder. I wonder. You know, y'all talk to me now. Did, did, was it always a, a, a winter Olympics? I want some feedback. Was it always a winter Olympics or has it always, did it come later? Did they start with? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. So what, what, was it always um, a you know, summer or spring and winter Olympics, or was it, did it start off just being like a summer Olympics or a spring Olympics or whatever, and then years later they, you know, started with the winter Olympics? I don't know, but sometimes I just be thinking about stuff. I be thinking about stuff because, why do I say that? Because in a lot of cases, if you put that colored man, that brother, that sister, that dark man. You put them on a level playing field in a lot of these sports. If you level the playing field in a lot of these sports, and you have a, a lineup of people all going forth in these activities with these sports, Um, I think it's safe to say that a great many of the ones that's going to walk away with the victory, not in every case, I'm going to be fair, not in every case, but a lot of times, them brothers and them sisters, they get it, whether it be running, climbing, jumping, Y'all know it. Let's be fair. If they, if you level the playing field, everybody started with that same at that same part mark, and that's not every case. I want to be fair. Be fair. I want to be fair. But looking at the statistics in the poll, them brothers and sisters, they gonna come to the top of that. In most cases, not every case. So I can't help but think about the Winter Olympics. Did somebody come up with that as an as an idea? Maybe because you know a lot of brothers ain't going to be in the cold, like talking about. A lot of sisters ain't going to be out there in the cold. Now you do have some. I think I saw. Some of the, what, the Jamaican bobsled guys, I think I saw them in there. They had a little bobsled, I think. And when they run in, they jump inside this little canoe-looking thing with wheels, whatever it is, you know, and they go on, go down this thing. I think I saw that. And and and, and there might have been some dark people in the Winter Olympics. I, you know, I don't watch it. I mean, I don't watch. Uh-oh. What the hero says, in 1925, the IOC. Now, y'all got to translate IOC. Hold on. The IOC formally created the Winter oh, Olympics, retro, retroactively making. Oh, let me put my eye, let me put my glasses on here. In 1925, in 1925, the IOC formally created the Winter Olympics. Retroactively making Kamatnik the first, and Kamatnik Scandinavian donated the speed rinks and slopes, and Norway won the unofficial team competition with 17 medals. Okay, hey, okay, all right. Uh, the History Channel has it that on oh, James Okay, now, so, 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 okay. So so when did the when did the so what was the first Olympic? What, what was it a summer one or was it? Okay, I see I see y'all got the date for the 
winter, whether it be 1925 or 1924. So when would the summer one? Or what? Oh, thank you, Behir. International Olympic Committee. <laughs> y'all know y'all got to translate that stuff for me. Now, so, 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 when, so when was the very first one? Was it a summer one? Find that out real quick and put it up there for me. When, when was the very first one? Was it in the summer or was it during the spring or was it in the fall? So, so we got a date for the winter, either 1925 or 1924. Um, now, now, I'm not saying I'm right, y'all. Now, 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 as they look up this stuff, I'm not saying I'm right. I could be wrong as I don't know what. But I just be thinking. And that don't mean I'm right. Y'all pray for me. Y'all mean I'm right. I could be wrong. But I just could have I could have to be curious as to, you know, I wonder, I just wonder, I just wonder if, you know, that was an idea to get somebody a chance to walk away with something. Because Last time I checked, I ain't too many brothers and sisters out there in that code. Now they'll get out there. Don't get it twisted. They'll get out there. First event date. What's that? Thunderbolt. Hold up. For real. We're here working on something. First event date. Thumbnail image. See more. Okay, bro, what was that? What's that, bro? First event date, thumbnail, image, see more. I know, bro, she on it, so she's she gonna, she gonna throw something up there. So here we go. All right, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I look up. Oh, y'all, oh, oh, y'all, it's about one minute left. So we gonna, we about to close out here, um, and we gonna pick back up on this next week. How, how, how many of y'all going to try to tune in? Hold on. Keep reading. Some, some Olympic. Okay, okay. Athens, Greece. April 6th through 15th, 1896. Okay, thank you, thank you. 1896, okay, there you go, thank you. So now, so here, so thank you. See that? See that? <laughs> See that? It started back in 1896. And now I don't know who was walking away with what back then, you know, but the winter one came later. And I... And I said, I ain't saying all right. Really, the truth, I hope I'm wrong. I hope when people ain't had no agenda, you know, that, you know, they're going to do this this way or do this or implement this or start this, you know. But even if they did do it for that reason, people do what they want to do. I don't care what you do. You can do all the running and jumping and sliding if you want to. But long as you got your sure Lord and Savior. And Mother Francis, I am Mother Francis. I am Mother Francis. I see you, Mother Francis. I see you. Now, I don't know why you said I am Mother Francis, but I see you, Mother Francis. I see you there. But, yeah, but we but we going to close uh, right here for the night because it's 9 o'clock, 9.01. And uh, we're going to pick back up. Uh, tune in next week. Tune in next week. We're going to continue this blackout. Um, it, it next, it's next, what am I counting there? Is next week still February? What's the date? Yeah, yeah, we still be in February. I found that the Winter Olympics was not until 1924. See that? There you go, 1924. So, hey, y'all tune in next week. Y'all tune in next week. We ain't we ain't scratched the surface. We're gonna pick back up in here next week, and we're gonna continue this blackout. Invite somebody to come in. Tune in. Come on to come on to the service. Uh, like I said, it's not a black or white thing. We're not racist. We're not prejudiced. You know, but somebody made it a black or white thing. Somebody did. And we serve the true living God who wants us to know truth and walk in truth. 
And that's all we're trying to do is learn truth and walk in truth. But most important of all, above all of this, our soul being right with Messiah. Thank you. Thank you. Next Friday, 25th. So, yeah, we're still in this Black History Month. So, yeah, definitely tune in next Friday, uh, same time, 7th. And invite somebody. Invite somebody to tune in. Um, subscribe to our YouTube page. I think we need 50 people to subscribe so we can start doing, I guess, live stream YouTube stuff and all that good stuff. So, um, so you know, invite people to come on to Facebook. Zoom, uh, uh, subscribe to the YouTube and, you know, and... Um, Amen. But like I said, most important of all, though we're talking about this blackout, which is great, which is good, but this blackout don't mean nothing if you ain't got your sure Jesus the Christ as Lord and Savior. This blackout don't mean nothing if you haven't gave your heart and mind to him. This don't give no black man no guaranteed ticket to salvation. This don't give no black woman no guaranteed pass to eternal life. This don't make you no better than any other race. We just want truth as best we understand it. That's all we want. You're not out here to try to belittle nobody or demise nobody, none of that. We just want to try to walk in truth. And the, the biggest truth is that everybody needs Messiah. Everybody needs Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. So if you have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, and you're watching this, before you leave off this, off this show, off this Facebook, make sure you make him Lord and Savior. Make, make, make sure you give your heart, mind, soul to him and surrender your will to his will. And you can do that by just repeating after me, saying, Lord God, in Yeshua, Jesus name I repent of all my sin and I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life come into my heart come into my mind come into my soul I repent of all my sin and I ask you to save me and I thank you for saving me if you pray that your soul is right I encourage you to connect with a Bible teaching believing ministry so that you can get watered um, and grow in Him. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for this service. Until next time.